Perfect. All right. This is Start Blogging in 2023, Part 2, Planning to Reach Your Audience. So oh, if you have not been here before, I'm sorry, this is this is part two. You did not have to attend part one if you would like to see part one, if you get a lot out of this or you're just curious. Um, if you scroll down on learn.wordpress.org and head to view all, I'm, all online workshops, click on view recorded online workshops, you can find a series of start blogging uh, on this page here. Um, yeah, so this was part one here. Again, you do not need to have attended that to understand this today. Uh, but you are welcome to join us there at some point. Okay, um, as far as the transcripts go, and that's a great question, they should be, they are all subtitled. So yeah, so that each of these videos is subtitled. That's a good question about the transcripts, though. I do believe we have those somewhere. Um, we will save that for the end, though. Okay, I will double check that. Um, it could be that they just haven't been approved yet. So I will make sure that I take care of that at the end of today. Thank you so much for bringing that to my attention. All right, start blogging in 2023, part two, planning to reach your audience. So hi there, I'm Sarah Snow. I'm a Florida resident by weekday traveler by weekend when time allows. I'm a former middle school teacher. Um, I'm a parrot and Sharpay mom. So you will hear some barking in the background most likely and definitely some parrots whistling. Uh, but th those are just my birds. <laughs> uh, I love cooking, learning languages, and currently studying American Sign Language and French in the ocean. And I am also a training team contributor slash mad scientist when things uh, go interestingly. So and I'm very lucky to be sponsored by Automatic. So let's talk about today's goals. Um, we're going to explore different content types. We are going to brainstorm lists of potential future topics. We are going to identify some top level categories, maybe some sub categories and tags, explore content design, um, and ultimately today is about your ideas. So this is a writing process workshop. Um, yeah, so with that in mind, um, I don't know, has anyone participated in National Novel Writing Month? <laughs> When we think about writing content, so like that, that's the biggie, right? Every November, people from around the world get together and write a 50,000 word novel. I'm just curious, has anyone heard of it? Catherine dropped a link to it. Okay, John says, yes, you've either heard of it or you participated in it. So there's, there's this idea with writing, and this is true for blogs, for stories, for screenplays, for, I don't know, Hallmark Channel films. Um, basically, that you... There are two types of writers, right? There are the plotters and the planners, right? Who meticulously plan everything out. And then there are the pantsers and they fly by the seat of their pants and just write whatever comes to their mind. So <laughs> one of these things can be a little bit more successful when it comes to blogging than the other. So today we are not gonna fly by the seat of our pants for our 2023 blog. We are going to plot and plan and create strategies. So. Um, let's talk first about some expectations today. Please stay courteous. Um, the most important rule is this, respect yourself and everyone in this room. Um, we all come in with varying levels of knowledge and background and abilities and all of that. So you will definitely uh, know some things that I don't know, and I will be learning from you as well. So we are going to brainstorm together and separately. Um, so please keep your, like, definitely participate. We want to hear your voice if you're so inclined, or you can type in the chat, as so many of you are. Um, but this type of, of brainstorming really works best with kind, deliberate participation. Um, and also, there are no wrong ideas. This is a writing workshop. Um, throw out kind of whatever comes to mind. Um, we'll stay curious and patient. And of course, this is an interactive experiment. So we're going to see how this goes together. Uh, the first one of these was, was pretty successful. I, I really liked it. So we're, we're trying another experiment this way. Um, yeah. And again, this is recorded at the end. I will say, hey, should we put this at the, the library at learn.wordpress.org? Um, just if there's anything that someone shares that's just a little too personal or something like that, if that happens, then I, you know, I'm definitely open to being like, hey, we'll <laughs> omit either that part or this entire recording. So, yeah, so those are, uh oh, did I do that thing again? This is what I get for not double checking my things. Here we go. All right. So we are not going to cover how to set up your blog. We did cover that last week. Um, so if you are looking to set up your name, 
Uh, and again, I will double check the subtitles on this because they should be there. If they're not, there might be, a, might be a problem with the file, but I will fix that today. So if you're looking to set up your blog, I dropped a link uh, in there today. Um, <laughs> we covered that last week. Oh, and apparently I put a link there. Whoops. Um, if you are looking for WordPress basics, we do have some courses for you for getting started with WordPress. If you don't have a host or a domain name, or these are totally new words to you, this course that I just posted is a text-based course, self-paced. You can definitely do that. Um, we're also not going to be covering the basics of block themes today, but we do have, once again, more excellent courses for you that can get you set up to design your blog using the block editor. <sighs> So just to clarify that, what we are learning, writing workshop, but we're not learning like specifically like deep WordPress uh, tool. So you will be seeing a little bit of a dashboard today. So before we get started, you are going to need either access to Google Docs. Um, so you can copy this Google document I'm about to share with you or a place to write down your ideas. This can be a notebook. This can be a word processor. This can be a napkin. Like whatever you have around, you're going to uh, want to do some actual writing today. So uh, I meant to have, oh, I do have a notebook, huzzah. So whether you are using Google Docs or just, you know, random little notebook that you have lying around, it is up to you. Okay, so let's start with this. How much do you already know about blogging with WordPress? One is I know almost nothing, and that is a-okay. Three is, hey, I know some things about blogging. And a five is, hey, I have an active blog or I've had one in the past. Like, I know a lot about blogging. Where do you fall? Mark Andrews says he's a five. Yes, excellent. <laughs> I'm going to learn so much from you probably. I see some threes, some fives. You have an active blog. Yes, I see a two. Beautiful. Okay, so threes, fours. All right. Perfect. Then we don't have to cover the absolute basics. That's great. And we will not get into the difference between post pages and things like that. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Can you tell I had a lot of coffee today? I need to slow down. That's what I'm going to do. So let's start with the topic of your blog. Uh, I have a bunch of blogs, <laughs> all with various, like, I think the last time I updated my parrot blog was like three years ago. Um, I have a family recipe blog. There's a random personal one for whatever's on my mind. And the latest that I'm probably going to start in 2023, which well, actually I did start, I haven't started writing yet, which is, this is going to be helpful for that. But it's about like open source teaching, contributing to WordPress, adventures in WordPress. What's the topic of your blog? Let's start there. Drop that in the chat box topic of your 2023 blog. Just curious. 2023 themes, recipes, technical info. Yes, those are great blog topics. It'd be interesting, Laura, if you did a, a blog about like using the 2023 themes in like different ways. Like I would be so fascinated by that as a WordPress user. <laughs> Travel writing, yes. Uh, food, art, and life, how to take control of your content with WordPress, adventures in WordPress, awesome. All right, Liz got a news site, a travel site. A new blog will be about how to use each block in WordPress. Ah, this is so cool. Okay, I'm actually, gonna, I'm seeing a lot of people being like, hey, I want to help with WordPress. If you are interested uh, in, you know, uh, contributing to learn.wordpress.org, um, we are always looking for lesson plans and tutorials and other people to run online workshops like this or co-host them like Catherine is doing for me. So if you're really passionate about WordPress, like if you're actually excited to write a blog about what each block does, like come join us. I would love to see some of that content on here too, if you would like. Okay, that plug is done now. <laughs> oh, let's see, there's a blog about accessibility. Oh, but the site itself is not accessible. Yeah, there's so much there. A blog about that is, is so important because there's just, there's so much there and it's ever evolving. Ah, WordPress performance tricks. Yes. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love how enthusiastic y'all are. Okay. So whatever the topic of your blog is, we are going to head to a link here and you're going to print this. Uh, well, you don't actually have to print this out. This is from a form of thing. Hmm. Um, and this is the graphic organizer we're going to use today. So I'm going to copy this link and drop it in here. If you have Google Docs, please open this, uh, open this doc 
And then you're going to go up here to file and you're going to click this make a copy button. And it's going to copy that to your Google Docs. If you are using a pen and paper, um, I'm just going to start at the very top of my, my notebook and I'm just going to write down my blog topic, which, what was my blog topic again? See, got to my blog topic was, it's adventures in WordPress, but it's specifically about like contributing and like teaching WordPress. So that's what I'm going to write across the top of mine is teaching WordPress. Teaching WordPress. So, and this is for any of one of us who is using like a, a mobile phone. I don't know if you can see it. I just wrote it across the top. Oh my gosh, this blur feature is ruining my best laid plans. Okay, <laughs> you get the idea. So this is my copy. So I'm just going to write my blog's topic, teaching WordPress in open source. That's what my blog topic is. My actual blog is called Adventures in WordPress Land. <laughs> um, but like this is what it's actually about. So we're going to start there. We're going to start with our blog topic. <sighs> and once you have done that, yep, ahead of myself here. <laughs> So you write that down there. And the other tool that we're going to use in addition to this copy is this collaborative workspace. This collaborative workspace looks like this. Ooh. So at the end of, of the sections where I say, hey, like you can contribute to this, we're going to have a sheet that looks like this. And so what you're going to do for this, and we're going to practice this really quick, is you're going to take a sticky note and you're going to you're going to answer the prompt. So the first one is, hey, where do you find writing inspiration? And this can be anything so long as it is courteous and respectful. So for me, like my first blog was like my pets <laughs> inspired me. And so it could just be some, something as simple as birds, uh, other things that inspire me, quotes. And you're just going to write your ideas right here. Now, if you are on a cell phone, you can also write this in the chat here. Um, and say, hey, uh, where I find writing inspiration is, I don't know, the sky is my inspiration. And I can take it from the chat there. So let's start by practicing this here. And again, the, the benefits of this is that it's anonymous. So that like, if you're a little shy, your name's not necessarily attached to it. Um, but if you, you know, if you have the limitation where uh, you're not able to use Google Docs for whatever reason, um, you can also post that in the chat. So you can participate either way, chat or right here. So let's start here and just open this up. Anyone should be able, oh, I need to fix that, can edit it. There we go. Now you can edit it. <laughs> um, and this collaborative workspace is separate from the Google Sheet. So we're, we're gonna switch back and forth a little bit. We're gonna have our copy here. This is what we're gonna work on. This is just for us. And our collaborative workspace is in another tab over here. So first off, where do you find writing inspiration? Take, take a minute, grab a note, grab one of these note cards from the top, middle or bottom, just write. See four people on this document. Ah, thank you for your participation, y'all. So head down, yep, to number two. Beautiful. People are making their way down there. Well done. Where do you find inspiration. One thing that inspires me in particular are WordPress users like you who are so passionate that you are writing your own blogs about WordPress. Like that's so cool to hear. Um, other WordPress users, where else do I find inspiration? Listening to the radio. Oh, what a great idea. When I have a problem, yep. Cooking and recipes, yep. Oh, I love other people's cooking blogs. I always make these um, intense uh, changes to every recipe and that's what I put on my family blog is <laughs> making it as spicy as I, as I like it. Oh, when I have a solution to a problem, yes. Oh, I love that. You find some, some way to make something like extra wonderful or better. Solving problems is a, is a really good space. News and books, yes. Podcasts. 
Okay, one person writes down their ideas on a notebook for reference. That's fantastic. I'm trying to think. It can sometimes be hard to sleep for me if I have something really exciting. I have a notepad <laughs> to the side of my bed where I write down a lot of things. They don't always make sense the next morning, though. <laughs> I'll just, there's a couple of interesting things also coming in in the chat. So one person says, my blog is work related. So from my work environment. Someone else said books as well. And Mark Andrews said on mobile, I find inspiration from others in the WordPress space, yourself, these group podcasts, and from philosophy slash books talks on our motivations. Philosophy talks on motivations. Yeah. I'm going to write down TED Talks in this box too, because like TED Talks have inspired me so much. They, they definitely give me food for thought. Okay. So inspiration comes from everywhere. Let's, let's finish up on here. Oh, I love it. Someone uses Learn WordPress for their inspiration. Yes, do use Learn WordPress. That is what it's here for. <laughs> awesome. Okay. All right. Em says it's much easier to be inspired by others, but much harder to write something that inspires others. Well said. That is very true. Ah. Oh. What do you do with the inspiration? And how do you write in a way that inspires others? That is what today's workshop is a little bit about. <laughs> my clients, yeah, my clients inspire you. I have to do this for work. Like that's a great inspiration too, right there. These don't all have to be like these like grand noble things. Sometimes it's, hey, like I run a dentist's office and I have to figure out how to run my dentist office blog. Like <laughs> my friend is in that boat. Cool. All right, so... This is what I get for skipping my directions, Catherine. I wrote them in today too. Ah, okay. Let's skip through to the next one. So we're going to start now, now that we've thought about like, what inspires us, we're going to head to our Google Docs, our notepad, our journal, and we're going to write, we're going to just start by brainstorming some topics. So we're going to try and think, okay, what are some individual post ideas that you can think about here? Now, before you get started writing the first, like I realized that I had a really tough time with this because one of the things that I do um, as I pre prep these is I go through the steps myself and I looked at this blank screen here and went, I can think of like one thing that I want to write. Like I'm very passionate about it, but oh, that was a little bit tricky. Um, so we're, we're going to brainstorm and I'm, it's going to be a little bit of a guided brainstorm. Um, there aren't going to be any right or wrong answers here. So if something that pops into your mind is like, I don't know, <laughs> teaching people from an RV, that's the first thing that pops into my head. I don't know that I'm going to write about it, but it can, it absolutely deserves a place on this list. So there are no right or wrong answers here. You can jot down anything that comes to mind. No topic is too large or too small. Um, can I share the outline for a blog file that we made in the first part? Yes to copy that link. If you have joined us later on, here is our collaborative document. So we are going to look for a little bit of inspiration. We're going to look for inspiration in some specific places. So the first one, I'm going to give you one minute. What is something that most people would be surprised by or get wrong about your topic? So I'm going to give you one minute and I'm going to write with you. What is something that most people would be surprised by or get wrong about your topic? If you come up with one thing, if you come up with a many, that's totally fine. But let's do one minute to think, what is something that would surprise? I'm going to write with you. What would surprise? What would surprise?
And that is time. Um, let's see. So someone's asking, how can I edit the Google document? So you're not going to edit this document itself. Go to file, make a copy, and this will make a copy in your Google Drive. Or again, you can do this on a piece of paper or Microsoft Word and just kind of whichever way you want. So I've written down a couple of things. Like this by itself is my, my first topic. So we're going to do that. So that, that was one thing is, hey, what, what can some of these challenges be? And you'll notice that I started, <laughs> I started with just the topic and then I just started writing down here. There's no wrong way to do this. This is for you. Yeah. And the other thing that you can do is you can go to file just because it looks like we're having a couple of problems. You can also download this in a variety of different formats. So if you have like Microsoft Word, you can download that there. If you've got just a standard text document, you can download it with plain.txt. This will save it onto your computer specifically rather than Google Docs. So you have two options there. And now I know that and we'll make sure that I talk about that for next time. Thank you all so much for that feedback. Cool. All right, so the next place we're gonna look for inspiration is we're gonna use Google. And Google has this thing where it predicts certain things. So if I go to google.com <laughs> and I'm going to write, I'm interested in both teaching and learning WordPress and just a lot of WordPress, right? So I'm going to look uh, teaching WordPress and then you'll notice that it auto corrects um, or like maybe how to learn WordPress. And then I've got this entire list here <laughs> of, of things here, like how to learn WordPress development, uh, how to learn WordPress web design, uh, how to learn WordPress for beginners, step-by-step, -step, how to learn WordPress Reddit. Interesting. I wonder how Reddit and WordPress, like and learn WordPress overall. Anyway, so all of this is starting to generate some ideas here. So we're going to start, we're going to take three minutes for this because you kind of have to go, you know, back and forth. I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to go to Google and I'm just going to type in something like WordPress is or is WordPress is your topic <laughs> and then see what Google does. And as you read through it, you're going to head back over to yours and you're going to just write down any topics that it spurs for you. Just what, what, and the other thing that's really beneficial about this is if you're saying, hey, is WordPress Google is going to auto predict based on what is uh, most often searched by users. So these topics are really valuable because people are looking for that information, which means if you write it and it's popular, you're going to connect with a lot of people. So it's very targeted this way. So looks like Catherine has created some options. Again, you can always do this on a piece of paper as well. So it doesn't have to be online. Let's take three minutes for this and let's just see what you can come up with. Let Google predict what you want. So I'm just going to type in my own here and I'm going to start this timer. Just take a few minutes. I'm going to write with you.
Okay. That is time finish sentence you are on. All right, I've got a ton of different topics here. Some of these are uh, more interesting than others, but that's okay. Let's do one last brainstorm. Um, use open verse to look for related WordPress images. So one thing that's really cool that not a lot of people know about com. I need wordpress.org is this new feature called open verse. It's not brand new. It's pretty new. It's new as of like 2022, like recent 2022. And so what open verse is, is it is an extensive open source library of free stock photos, images, audio, and you're, uh, uh, it's all available for you to use it for free. Now there are some rules there. Sometimes they want like attributions. So like if I, Sarah took a picture of something, like one, one of the rules might be, Hey, you have to say that I, I did it and you link back to my profiles, but at the same time, like it's super free. So I want you to head to Openverse and I want you to type either your topic here or something related to your topic here. Um, I'm just going to say WordPress meetup, right? Because that's like one of the places where people learn. I'm just going to see what I can find. Um, so you can do images, you can do audio, like there's all kinds of stuff for me. I'm just going to select images. Um, but I'm going to search here and I'm just going to see what comes up here. Um, and as you can see, we've got all kinds of stuff here. And this, this tells me a little bit about my audience, but also like the idea here is that it's going to help me generate um, some ideas here. And again, there's no right or wrong answer, just you're going to use these images to inspire yourself. So when I see this here, I think about like mentorship. Um, and, and the uh, importance of empowering women in WordPress specifically and how that's how I got there, right? So I'm just going to write down mentorship in WordPress, how and why it matters, right? And it's just based off of an image there. So we're going to take two minutes. You're going to head to Openverse and you're going to search for things. And if you're initially you're like, oh, I don't see anything here, um, you can definitely type something else here. So we're gonna do that and I'm going to give you two minutes. Where is my timer? Did I lose my timer? I think I lost my timer, y'all. <laughs> two minutes. Any topics that come to mind, here we go. <laughs> You're not wrong, Laura. Uh, he might look for WordPress 2023. I mean, there's no images of that, but I could see different inspirations here, like different um, styles that might have been inspired here. I don't know. <laughs> I want to talk a little bit more. There's a lot of questions coming in about copyright and whether they're free. And I know you mentioned briefly, I mean, maybe I can just say a few words while people are typing, if that's okay, Sarah. Yeah, uh, go for it. And then like, there's also use here, right? Like you can use commercially here. Like if I'm only looking for images like that, if I'm trying to make money, there's a filter for that. But go ahead and speak to that, Catherine. Exactly. Um, these images are, are called Creative Commons, which is a type of um, type of license that allows anyone to use uh, a document. Um, but there are different types and that's where the CC is. Uh, there's different types of Creative Commons licenses. And as Sarah's sort of showing you, those question marks will show you uh, what the requirements are for each type of license. So when you find an image you want, you're gonna to wanna to check the license 
and see what the terms of use are. So they're all free, but some of them uh, are in the public domain. If they're over a certain age in a particular country, uh, you're allowed to use it for free with no restrictions. Some of them you're allowed to use it with no restrictions, except you need to give a credit to the creator like here. Um, so there's that's what you'll want to look for. And if you, for example, have specific requirements, for example, you want to use it commercially and you want to adapt it, um, then you'll want to check those boxes like Sarah showed um, to find the images that meet your requirements because there's no, no point sifting through a bunch of images that uh, you can't use commercially if you're needing it for commercial use. So yes, as M said, free as long as you know which rules to follow exactly. So if there are other questions about that, you can pop them in the chat or unmute. And Ahab said they need the file again for the first part. So just scroll up in the chat and I pasted the link a bunch of times. I don't, I don't know if you can still see it. There's the collaborative doc, the PDF doc, the word copy, the workshop copy, uh, the worksheet, sorry. Um, there's the, another link for the worksheet. So they should all be there um, just a little bit further up in the chat. Yep. And then the open verse, if you're looking for this specifically, it is here. So yeah, so definitely use these, these filters. So if you search for something, you, like, if you're looking at this and you're like, wow, this is such a great picture for the blog that I want to write, you can absolutely do that. Um, and you just want to double check what's going on here. But the other thing is, if you're just being inspired by images, um, as long as you don't, you know, copy the image and put it onto your blog, like you can really pull inspiration from everywhere. Like I could pull inspiration from, I don't know, there, there's a movie, I don't know, Freedom Writers or Stand and Deliver, any of those teaching movies, uh, the Robin Williams movie where, um, oh, what is it called? I can't remember, but any of the teaching movies, like if I'm watching one of those movies and I suddenly am like how I inspire students using WordPress, like I can do that provided I don't like put the movie itself on my blog. So there's a difference between actually downloading and using this image and being inspired by it as well. Okay, so I think that we're talking, so you have looking for the um, the part one of the series, I think, over on Learn WordPress. Catherine, if you wanted to grab that one more time. Thank you. Okay, so now you should have a good long list of of topic ideas. And for me and a lot of people out there, this is the hardest part, figuring out what to write. Because when I first sat down, I was like, okay, we'll just brainstorm you guys for like five minutes. Like I couldn't think of anything, but doing it this way, really looking at these different places for inspiration, this is where we come up with a beautiful list of topics. So I'm gonna remove some stuff here. Now that we have our topic list, uh, we're gonna start looking at what is it? Um, we're going to start looking at different types of blog content. So the types of blog content, when you think of a blog, at least when I think of a blog, I think about articles that will probably take me between like three to five minutes to read. Like maybe they're like a magazine article or a newspaper article in length. Um, and they have some images in there, maybe some like some media or whatever. Um, but there are more than just those blog types. Like technically speaking, uh, like Instagram is a type of blog, isn't it? And it's like the most bare bones blog you can have. It's an image and a caption. Tumblr is the same way. Image, caption. That's a type of micro blog. So I want us to think about what types of blogs have you really seen in the wild? Because when I really think about this, there are so many different options. So we're going to head to our handy dandy collaboration here, and I'm going to share this link again. And again, if you are participating via mobile, please drop your answers in the chat and we will put them here. Um, so for example, listicles, I think about like BuzzFeed, right? <laughs> BuzzFeed is like 10 things I hate about you or like uh, five ways to entertain your parent. Like you see a lot of listicles out there. So what other types of blogs have you seen? Let's head here and head to slide number three. What are some types of blog posts that you've just seen? Out, out. Grab a sticky note, move it, and type it. Or just write on the one that I just moved. <laughs> so Sarah, mm -hmm. while, while folks are doing that, uh, looks like Ahab is looking for the worksheet that was used in part one of the workshop. So the other workshop we did, the worksheet that was used there, they have. Is that correct? <laughs> you said you're looking for the file, not the video itself. Is that what you mean? The worksheet file from part one? 
last week? Mm -hmm. I think it's this that you're looking for. Awesome. I should yeah. add that somehow. Maybe in yeah. the comments on. Yeah, in the comment on the video. TV. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I've got captions right. and I've got TV. All right. Yeah, thanks. I write this down. <laughs> <laughs> You'll remind me. Okay, so we are back here. So what types of blog posts have you seen in the wild? So this could be topics. This could also be like, let's talk about recipes, right? When you think about a recipe blog, one of the things that has annoyed me more than words can say, which is why I have a private recipe blog, is that those tend to be really long. Uh, and I, I compare like some of my, my favorite blogs, um, my recipe blogs to like, I don't know, like New York Times recipe blogs and the ones that are the ones that are like official news blogs tend to be really short and it's because you pay for them. <laughs> so if I want, if I want a New York times recipe, it'll like tease what it is. And then it, the rest of it's behind a paywall. That's how they make money. Whereas someone who is a, a blogger relying on ads, well, they need a lot more of that long form there in order to generate that revenue from those ads. So I'm happy to go and visit the, those those pages. But for me personally, like I, <laughs> if I really just want to make something in 15 minutes, I don't want to spend five minutes reading about it. So like, those are two different types of recipes. There's just the recipe and there's the really long form ones that both do different things. So let's see, worker tasks, listicles. Okay, cool. Technical blogs. All right. Perfect. All right, let's let's talk about then. Let's actually think about like different blogging formats. So there's all kinds of different types of writing, right? There's short little tweets on Twitter. There are giant essays on long reads. There are entire encyclopedias of books. That's what we're going to be looking at next. And we did that. And Laura's just like me. I just want the recipe. <laughs> I love photos with step by step. Yeah, those are great. So photo blogs are definitely a type as well. Um, so we're going to start with short form articles. So for search optimization, most it, it's generally a best practice to make sure that your blog posts are at least three hundred words in length. Um, like it just it makes Google and other search engines a lot happier. <laughs> However, not every bit of content has to be 100% perfect for SEO uh, for you to still get ranked and found and things like that. So variety, when you really think about your readers, it's the spice of life, right? So what happens to your readers if every single article is going to take them five to 10 minutes? One thing that I found with my, my parent blog, which is my most successful blog accidentally, was that I just kind of... Um, I had a lot of, of length variation. Sometimes it was a picture of my birds. Sometimes it was an entire article, but it definitely, I definitely had more people uh, coming to my site. So Google, M says Google wants a ton of text to show authority to rank higher in search engines. And because you are here with us for today's workshop, we're going to be talking about some SEO tips that you're going to be using as well. So it's a really good idea to mix in some shorter posts with 150 words and maybe like a half dozen images. I mean, at the bare minimum, you could definitely have a picture and a line of text, and that might be really interesting. Bonus point <laughs> to this type of blog is that it's a lot faster to write. So if you have a goal of 12 blog posts a year, or maybe maybe I'll double mine because mine was originally 12 because I was like, okay, every single blog post of mine is going to be super long. And it's going to have all the images and do all the things. Suddenly, I feel like maybe I can post more regularly, which is good for search engines, if occasionally I have shorter blog posts, 300 words or less. So now we're going to head to our topics here. And we're gonna look at our topics that we generated. And we're gonna decide, hey, which of these topics might make for a good short form article? So a lot of these that I wrote down um, are pretty long. Um, your idea here is to say, hey, what are some short form articles that might be really useful, really, just really short? Um, yeah, and, and you're just going to think which topics would work here. So we're just going to brainstorm. Let's do two minutes. You can look at your existing list and just move it in here, um, or you can come up with new topics entirely. So 
timer. Let's take two minutes. I'm going to write with you. Um, I'm actually going to pull out some stuff in the chat. Laura says my website gets low scores because I don't write a lot. Yeah. So like short form articles, just posting something regularly, even if it's short, can be really, really good for that. All right. I'm going to press start. Let's take a minute to write down, hey, what would be some good short form articles? That is time. So I didn't get much here because I was also, there's some really great chat interaction going on here. You can see I wrote down some things that could make a really good short form article. Um, this is really pretty straightforward. This is something that I could do pretty easily. And now it makes me want to double my goal from 12 blog posts a year to 24. So <laughs> that by itself this is a great idea. Uh, I'm going to back up in the chat and see if I can get caught up. Where was I? Uh, so M says each website should have its own concept and blog topics for both search engines and site viewers to understand. And that is such a great point. I have a blog where I just write whatever comes into my head. And let me tell you, like, it does not exist on Google as far as I'm aware, because it's like everything, <laughs> it's everything under the sun. Um, whereas my parrot blog that is very specifically about birds uh, actually ranks on Google. <laughs> so <laughs> having like a contained topic or related topics, and we're going to get into categories and subcategories a little later, um, is a really good, good idea. Uh, video transcripts are also great for page count numbers or word count numbers. Um, and Catherine did say in general, yes, if you have very like separate topics, a separate blog is ideal. Um, I think she said what I just said. But if you have two blogs and end up hardly posting on either one, it's better to combine them and blog more frequently. So there are no hard and fast rules. So you're totally right. Um, and if you don't rely on search engines for traffic, if you don't care about that really for search engines, you don't need to worry about search engines. So yeah, that's actually a really good point, Catherine. Um, and there, there's a, I can get this at the end, but there is a great online workshop that was uh, done in the past uh, by Courtney PK. And it talks about how you own your content and how to share it everywhere. Um, so that's another option. So we'll find that link in a little bit. So now this next one's a little bit easier, a little bit more straightforward. Um, this next one is long form articles. So let's talk about what that looks like. And it's going to make me go through this again. Oh, why do I do this? There we go. Okay. <laughs> So long form content, these can be 500, 800, or even a thousand words. Some best practices for this, I mean, if you 
seen blogs at all, you'll notice that you want to break up your text into short paragraphs. It was definitely news to students that I've taught that you need to break up chunks of things because you don't want just like a giant wall of text. Um, you do want to use headings appropriately, and we're going to go over that um, if there's time at the end about how to do that for each blog post. Um, and you definitely want to vary your paragraph length. You don't want every paragraph to be exactly the same size. Some should be nice and short. Some should be longer. Some should maybe have an image. Like, you definitely want to do that. So let's just take a minute. And I want you to think about, look at your topics and decide, hey, which of these would make really good long form articles? Which of these speak the most to you of your topics? And just put three to five here in your long form articles. I'm gonna press start and I'm gonna do this with you. And that is time. Finish the sentence you were on. Next, we're going to think about some additional types of content because, again, variety is really the spice of life. Um, one thing that can be really exciting about teaching WordPress. Uh, not teaching WordPress, blogging is just having variety for yourself as well. I don't know about you, but like I get tired of writing the same type of format all the time. So another type of blog content you might consider are interviews. And again, this can be short form, three questions, easy peasy, lemon squeezy, or it could be as long as 14 questions. So, and the other thing that's really cool about this is that there's some format flexibility here. So you can definitely write this down. Like I could interview Catherine Presner here about what, what she's enjoying, like teaching WordPress co-hosting with me, right? That could be written, or maybe I hop on a Zoom with her or maybe make a podcast. Um, this can be written, this can be recorded, or maybe even a video. It's a video, SEO tip, make sure it has captions and a transcript. Both of those things are very helpful, both for accessibility and SEO. Um, and it also adds ethos and in, in, in your credibility. Um, so for people who have blogs outside of you, like if you interview someone who is well known uh, in your field in WordPress, um, they can link to your blog post. So for example, uh, my former team lead, Hugh Lashbrook, he has a really great blog. I could definitely interview him about creating a learning community and he would probably link it on his blog. And because his blog has it's pretty highly ranked as far as like open source stuff uh, that would actually boost my credibility as well with search engines. So that's also really good for search engine optimization. 
and it brings in experts beyond you. Um, like I'm obviously here teaching WordPress, but Catherine, for example, if I interview her, she's been in this space for much longer than I have been. And like people know her uh, in a lot of ways. Like I think I knew about who she was before I, I joined uh, my current job with Automatic. So saying, hey, I'm a learning expert and here she is a, like a long time expert. That can be really, really good. So I'm gonna take two minutes and ask yourself, who might you interview for a blog post? Just brainstorm a couple of ideas here about who might be a good person or two or three. Two minutes, just jot down some ideas. I'm just gonna write down Catherine because I've been using you as an example. Okay, that is time. So we've got these prompts now. Man, these are more people than I would have ever have thought to, to do before. Cool. All these ideas. <laughs> At some point, maybe I'll interview one of you. What it's like to attend these regularly. I just, you're, you're our community. We adore you. Thank you so much. Okay, cool. And then... The last one, and we're going to get into categories and tags soon, but again, we really just want you to have a really meaty base to pull from here. Um, so that way, when you're saying, okay, I need to write, we're going to make a plan here and we're going to use it really, really well. So our next one is just other forms of blog content. So this can be listicles, like five to 10 ways to teach WordPress, right? Or letters. Um, I really like letters to people. Um, like, for example, I wrote one blog post about my birds and it was a, an open letter to my new parrot. So I rescued a parrot. She was 26 years old and I wanted to make promises to her in a way that other people rescuing parrots could as well. So um, yeah, I'm trying to think of there. Are there any other like content types? Um, we could do things like, I don't know, just images, right? Image plus captions. Uh, this could be podcasts. This could be videos. Yes. Captions. So consider what other forms of blog content that you want to write. And this could be very personal to you. There's no, again, there's no real wrong way to do this. This is just a brainstorm. You can do this or you can choose not to a short essay yeah a dramatic story oh yes dramatic story anecdotes i'm just adding some stuff in here so you can kind of see it um dramatic story 
personal account. Um, <laughs> you could write a fable. <laughs> I don't know, with animals. <laughs> There's all kinds of stuff. Reviews, yes, beautiful. Any other forms of blog content? We're going to take, let's do three minutes for this one. And I want you to just list out what, what feels good to you. So I really like listicles. I grew up on BuzzFeed. So <laughs> those 10 things I hate about you or whatever, or I love about you uh, are wonderful. I also really like, oh, there's people. Um, I also really just, I really like images. I don't know. I like to take pictures. And I really like... Not a big fan of podcasts for myself, stand-up comedy. <laughs> um, I'm going to just stick with those three. So maybe pick one, maybe two additional forms of like types of blog content. We're going to take three minutes here just to jot down some ideas. And again, you can pull from up top. You can come up with brand new ones. No wrong way to do this. So three minutes. That's right. If you're just joining us, we are currently working on this document here. We're down here in box number four, what other forms of blog content like you want to write. And we're just coming up with a big old list of ideas. About half an hour left. That's time. Finish the sentence you were on. All right, y'all are doing a fantastic job. I hope that you're coming up with lots of great things. <laughs> all right, so at this point, you have probably more ideas than you could write about in all of 2023. And that's a good thing because then you can pick the very best ones. So as you're looking at your ideas, um, WordPress offers uh, a way to categorize and, and tag your, your posts in different ways. So we're going to really think about how to group 
our categories. Um, so it's going to be an experiment. I forgot to look at this before I did this. So my current website, there's nothing on it. You don't need to go there. Um, this is the website that I created for my adventures in WordPress land. It's just a basic stock theme. Like none of this is, this is my stuff yet. Um, and I've got, you can see I've got several different categories that I eventually want to write about. Um, so this is just my basic theme, but the main thing that I want you to think of as you're looking at your categories is what are kind of the different buckets, the different categories that your work falls into. So originally I was like, okay, my work learning WordPress together. The second category um, would be like, hey, working remotely from the road. And then the third one, gosh, I did it again with my mouse, Catherine. How do I do this? This is what I get for using my smart mouse. Um, the last one is like, hey, my journey to remote work. So this was initially what I thought I was going to be writing about. Um, but if I actually look at my topics, I feel like I may have different categories than what I originally thought. Now I can still have those categories. You can have, I mean, a ton of different categories, right? So categories, you separate content so that people who are interested in, you know, how to start working remotely, um, like they can click on that right there and they can be taken to blog posts specifically about that. Or people who are like, hey, how do I work on, on WordPress? Like from my RV or from the road or whatever, your travel van. Um, if they can click on that and, and find just posts related to that. Or hey, <laughs> learning WordPress together. Um, this is, I feel like this encompasses everything though. So that might be just my general category. So what you want to do now is you want to think, hey, what are the three categories that you you're tending to break up into? So you're going to take a minute or two and you're going to look at this and you're going to see, hey, which of these fit into, into what? So if I'm looking at mine, for example, um, I'm seeing a lot of like challenges of learning WordPress development. I see creating lesson plans in your own classroom. So I'm seeing some teacher things, teaching WordPress. And I, and I see some stuff about learners, right? Like when I scroll down to like my interviews, like I've got, I want to interview Emma about accessibility or, you know, some of our training team reps or just interviewing the learners, like what's it like to be here? So I feel like my categories might actually be something like challenges in teaching WordPress. Category two might be learning WordPress. And then category three... I haven't figured out yet. I definitely have some, like we've got contributing to WordPress. I see that a lot, contributing to WordPress stories. Like that could be something, maybe just not stories, just contributing to WordPress. And these are the different ways that I'm separating my different topics out. And this helps me plan pretty well. Um, I definitely want like, working in WordPress from the road. That's going to be one that I'm really interested in. And yeah, you're just going to, you're going to take two minutes and just kind of come up with your categories. And if you're not sure, you're welcome to ask in the chat, but let's, let's take to really just analyze our things and group them. So I've written mine down. I'm actually going to go through, I'm going to write down my categories here. Once you have your categories here, consider like if you can group each of these in here.
you know, as I'm looking at this, one of my passions is WordPress for teachers. So rather than just teaching WordPress, most of your topics should go into one of your categories, right? But this might actually be a subcategory because we've got teaching WordPress, WordPress for teachers. I'm going to say this is a subcategory teaching. this time finish where you are do you if you need more time do speak up and say hey I need a little bit more we're just being mindful we've got 20 minutes <laughs> so now that you have your categories like you should be able to go through and figure out hey which one of these fits in these different buckets right um I really struggle so I was initially going to be like okay like let's brainstorm <laughs> Let's brainstorm some potential tags and we can do that. But I have a really hard time doing that before I actually write the post. Now you can't, and, and so categories separate. Tags are like the, the, the things that relate, right? Um, the things that link, <laughs> um, that link things in your post. So for example, I've got these categories like teaching WordPress, learning WordPress, contributing to WordPress, working in WordPress from the road. So one th like one tag that might join all of these. Um, I was thinking about like WordCamp photos, right? Um, I might have a tag that's like, hey, this is at WordCamp US or WordCamp Asia or WordCamp Europe. I could have a tag that links these different things. Um, and it's just definitely more granular. Oh, big question. Do we, this is just something that I'm thinking, do we have a categories versus tags? Online WordPress. Ooh, let's find out. We have a lesson plan. Oh, we don't have a tutorial about this now. Okay, that's going to go to my list then. We should definitely have a tutorial about the difference between categories and tags. I think that this group is pretty um, advanced though, so we probably don't need to get granular and like go into the, the super details. Speak now if that is not the case. Um, but let's keep that in mind. So now that we're, we're doing this, um, I think it's a really good idea to start planning out your potential posting calendar. So let's take two minutes and you're going to look at your list of topics um, and you're going to write down what the topic is. So you're going to go back up here. And you're going to pick something. Um, so like five ways to contribute to the WordPress training team. Um, that could be a good topic. I mean, it's not the one that speaks to my heart yet, but you're just going to pick something. Um, you're going to pick a topic and you're going to say, hey, in the next three weeks, I'm going to write that down. Uh, this is a listicle. The category is contributing to the WordPress training team. Um, and potential tags might be something like WordCamps or, I don't know, <laughs> WordCamps, training team, open source. Like, again, I'm really bad about this. Like, again, this is, there's no right or wrong way to do this. If you're like me, you might skip this until the end. If you like to plan your writing, be like, no, I want it to include the following things you can, but I want you to, to, to just take two minutes and plan out, Hey, what's really speaking to you here. And if you're like me, I was planning on doing one post a month, but maybe I'll do two. And one of them will be an image. I want you to go through your list and really decide, Hey, what am I going to do in January? What am I going to do in February? And what am I going to do in March? So just take two minutes, let's plan.
All right, we're running out of time. So finish the sentence you're on. If you're like me, you didn't quite finish up, but you can definitely do this after this workshop. I too have a meeting after this, so that's good to keep us all accountable. But yeah, you definitely want to plan this. And if you're like me, it's a good idea to actually put this into your actual work calendar. So highly recommend that when you have fleshed this out and you're committed, put these posts in your calendar and stay true to that. All right. With our last little bit, um, we're going to take our first blog article and we're going to talk about I'm trying to set up if we have time for this. I think we do. We're going to talk about planning for success because if you're a pantser like me, you tend to, like when I first did this, um, I used headings for visual effect instead of for accessibility. Um, and that was not a good thing to do. Search engines don't like that. And my bird website was not accessible to people who own birds who use screen readers. So the headings that you use in WordPress are really, really important. So Wait two seconds. Uh, what is it called, Google? I'm going to show you a WordPress installation. It's a really good idea. Where is my local? There it is. <laughs> two seconds. It's a really good idea to plan out your blog post, much like planning out an essay. I don't know if in high school or middle school, your teachers were like, here's how to plan an essay. This is how to plan a blog post so that your posts are accessible, which also means that uh, search engines like Google are going to like your website a lot more. So I'm going to open up a random sample site. Come on, WP admin. There it goes. All right, let's make sure I've got a theme where everyone can see. I do, perfect, okay. So if I'm going to write a new post, I'm going to write a new post. It can be really tempting to be a National Novel Writing Month pantser, and just start writing. Highly recommend actually planning out your headings first. So your first heading is, is known as your H1. So when I talk about headings, I'm talking about this block right here specifically. So I typed in slash heading. That's one way to do that. If you look at your inserter, which is this little blue button up here, and type in heading, you'll notice that the first one that's selected is your H2 heading. So these will be varying sizes, do not use this for visual effect. You want to use these to plan out your writing. So one best practice that I've heard, and there are some exceptions to this, is to only have one H1 heading. And so your H1 heading is the title of your blog post. Um, if someone knows when a good reason to have more than one uh, title is, um, please put that in the chat. Um, but generally speaking, this first heading is the title of your blog post. This tells screen readers that, hey, this is the overall topic of this specific post. So if you're planning this out on your sheet, um, your first heading is going to be your first blog's title. So whatever you put up here in January, uh, how I transitioned from teaching eighth grade to teaching WordPress, that's fine. I'm going to copy this here or just type it in here. Well, if I copy it, it's not going to show up. Hmm. That's uh, that's so good. Let me fix that. There we go. To teaching WordPress. All right. So how I transitioned from teaching eighth graders to teaching WordPress. This is going to be what I put in this first title up here. Then we start to break this down. So I want you to picture your first blog article as if you're looking, as if it were appearing in a magazine or in a newspaper. So when you're reading a magazine or a newspaper, um, one of the things that people usually tend to do is skim to see if they, like to see if that's an interesting blog article, right? So I think back to like my teen days where I was always reading Glamour magazine. And if an article was relevant to me, I would skim the bolded headings, right? Um, <laughs> I would skim those bolded headings. So, and within each of those headings, there might be some subheadings there. Um, but you generally want to plan out what those headings would be. So if I were to write this for a magazine, this first article, how I transitioned from teaching eighth graders to teaching WordPress. Um, it's a really good idea to sit down and figure out what you want it to, to say. So some of my headings might be something like, why I loved teaching, teaching kids, right? 
that would be one of my headings here. Now, I don't know that I would say as much about like what it meant to be like teaching kids. Like I wouldn't have any subheadings underneath it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to put another one here. Why I love teaching kids. Why I wanted to transition out maybe. I'm trying, I'm trying to give a good example. You know what? I'm actually going to give an example that is a little different just because this is this is going to take a little bit more brain power than the nine minutes we have will allow. So um, I'm going to do like for my parrot blog, right? One of my, the title for my parrot blog uh, that I want to write is how I get my parrots to eat their fruit and vegetables or maybe just their vegetables, right? That's a little bit easier for me. This is a blog post I've had percolating for a minute. If I'm scanning this, it's an article in a magazine in my brain. The first thing is like, <laughs> my parents hate vegetables, right? <laughs> and I can talk about like what those challenges are. That's gonna be one of the first headings. Another heading is how I, maybe mash I use for hiding vegetables in their food. Now, this one's a good one because um, it might talk about why, right? So I've got some stuff about like hiding vegetables, but specifically hiding leafy greens because my parrots won't touch it. This heading three is a subheading of heading two. So um, <laughs> I'm getting a lot of direct messages. Very hopeful things are just very distracting. Um, you, this would be a smaller heading than... than uh, having two up here. And it's a good way to basically just, just plan out your writing. So if I'm doing this over here, title of my blog post, how to get my parrots to eat their vegetables. And I can workshop this, how to get picky parrots to eat their vegetables. I don't know. My first heading here is going to be they Eckies and Amazon parrots need greens. Um, I can definitely put some things in here. Um, I can talk about, so I would probably write, here is an introduction where I write about <laughs> why parrots need their greens. Um, so the second one is going to be a subheading of this. So this, the second heading is going to relate to this up here. I'm going to talk about eclectus parrots, dietary needs, calcium, and weird feather molts. So this relates specifically to parrots needing their greens, right? It's a subheading of this. So now I would write the story of my bird who lost all his feathers on his head. True story. Happens to a collectus paris. Um, lost all his feathers on his head because of a calcium deficiency. So I would go through this and I, you know, my content goes here. When I transition to another heading, I'm going to want another uh, an H2, right? Because this is, doesn't fall underneath this. And I'm explaining this very poorly because I don't have <laughs> nearly as much time as I want. But let's say like, how I hide food, how I hide greens in mash. Um, you basically, yeah, you use your headings that way. So subheading. So Catherine is answering a really great question. Linda said, hey, let's say you're writing a listicle like six blocks and two template parts that make a killer homepage. Wow, I want to read that. Great topic, Linda. Um, then would you list each type of block as a heading? So yeah, I, I would say so. You could list every single one that way. So if I was writing that, um, it would be the title there. Uh, the title would be six blocks and two template parts that make a killer homepage. And then every single one of those would be its own heading too. Now, if you're confused about this, if you're new to WordPress and you're like, I don't really understand the difference between H2 and H3, it's okay. You can stick with H2s. Um, this is just how someone who's using a screen reader is going to skim your content. So the screen reader is just going to read 
on the headings. So if I had someone who was using a screen reader, they couldn't see clearly what was on my screen and they wanted to figure out, hey, is this article worth my time? The screen reader is going to start with the H1, how to get picky parrots to eat their vegetables. And then it's just going to read the headings. The problem, Eckies and Amazon parrots, they need their greens. Eclectus parrots, dietary needs, calcium and weird feather molds, how I hide greens and mash. So that all of this content here, like it doesn't read it from start to finish. It's how people who use screen readers skim your website. It's also how search engines search your website as well. Um, so the search engines will be able to identify a lot faster what your site is about and list it a lot higher. I need to, I need to definitely do a little bit more prep work for this, and I'm going to include this in my search engine optimization one, but we've got four minutes. So I think that brings us kind of to the end of it. So the last little bit on yours is basically just, hey, plan out your headings and decide what do you want those to be? If this is a newspaper article, what do you want this to be? Optional tool for that. <laughs> Linda, yeah. I will write that article for you. Catherine, go for it. Yeah, there was a request to <laughs> either send out the completed form, that the one we're looking at here, so people can see an example, or perhaps if this does get posted on the uh, video site, you can put, add a link there to it, whatever is yeah. easier. So I felt like this one didn't get like super personal. Um, would anyone have a problem with me posting this? Like on, on learn.wordpress i'm feeling like i want to upload it so laura says no we're good to go please let me know either uh here or if you go to the meetup if you go to meetup let's see some of my drafts here <laughs> um you can leave a comment here if if there's an issue um at the very bottom down here it's live now when does the work schedule rescheduled to it's now we're good. Okay. Cool. <laughs> this is, I always want to run these for two hours because y'all are so wonderful. Let's go ahead and skip to the very, very end here. Um, I definitely want to do a session on SEO. I have a quick link to how was today's session. Um, I should probably click the link in my document. That'll probably help. So this is a link to a quick Google form. The only required question is, hey, how was it? Four to great. Um, if you would like to answer what was the most valuable part of today and what is one question you still have, I would love that. They help me to frame future um, workshops. I do know that we definitely want to go more into depth about search engine optimization in the future. Um, and then this one is really optional. Like, what is the link to your blog? Like, I would love to follow your adventures and see kind of your work in action. So if you're comfortable with that, you don't have to do that. But I would love to see the link to your blog and see how this uh I think you might need um, to just change permissions on that so people can see. Of course I do. Settings. Where is that setting? <laughs> it's going to let me, uh, anyone with the link, there we go. Please refresh that page and you should be able to see it. Just let me know how today went. This will help me plan for future ones. Um, and give me feedback. <laughs> um, yeah, so cool. I apologize for the rushed wrap up, but I really hope that at the end of today, um, you are able to uh, look at this and look at what you've created um, and get, get started blogging. You have a ton of different topics here, lots of ideas. And I would really look forward to seeing what you do in the future. You can see mine here <laughs> just as an example. But all right, I have to go. Have a great one, everyone. I will see you next time. Cheers. Now oh, I've lost my Zoom again.